Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 410. And yes, today we are doing definitely an earlier session. So if you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button. And today we will be covering Filipino empty hand. And we'll be covering some of the aspects as far as consequence and management, depending on what you're doing. We're going to look at guntings versus destructions. They are different. In addition to that, we're going to be looking at what Tuan Belton incorporates as far as mid work and how he makes it more applicable to address functionality, and we're going to look at the lens of his fighters. Do they pull off some of the stuff that he teaches them? Has he had success with it? So we're going to be covering all that stuff. So if you have questions, please drop them in on the right-hand side, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. If they're not kind of in lens of what we're talking about, doesn't mean I haven't seen them. doesn't mean I'll get to them. It just means I'm going to wait till they're kind of more appropriate to put in there. So don't fear. I always see them, and I always get to them. And without further ado, here's the man, Tuan Belmuk. How are you? <laughs> Good. What's up, guys? How you doing? So you had a, uh, you've been traveling. Uh, you're in Florida now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing you didn't get much sleep. So. No, not at all. So left at um, 11.45 p.m., um, yeah. arrived at uh, 8.30 a.m. It is noon, so I went to get a little bit of breakfast, and then I barely had maybe 30 minutes of nap, and then I was like, I got to get on a podcast. So, um, yeah, so my bags under my eyes. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you uh, doing this, so. Um, and you're down there, of course, seeing uh, what you're going to get to later in the show, but uh, GM Bobby. So we'll cover that, too. Um, just for the folks who might not know from previous episodes and all that, just give us a quick uh, rundown on your uh, basically your martial arts background. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of people make jokes um, of my title because they combine all the acronyms or whatever. They call me Guru Krutu Han Coach, <laughs> all the names possible because, well, Tu Han um, from Piketty Tertia Kali, uh, there, I think Kurt just said it, Guru Tu Han Krutu Han Kru Coach. <laughs> Guru Tu Han Kru Coach, yeah. <laughs> so Tu Han, because uh, a Grand Tu Han Leo Gahe, uh, so I'm a Tu Han Fifth Hagdan. Um, and so that's, you know, within Piki Dutra Shikali, you start like at the lower levels from Yakans, Lakans, to Gurus, Matas, Nagurus, Agalans, et cetera, et cetera. So Tuhan, it's a pretty high level. And uh, with all due respect to, you know, the Tuhans, um, Tuhans vary from Tuhan to Tuhan. Um, you know, you got 12 Lakdan Tuhans, like Tuhan Philip, Galinas, and then you've got uh, other generational Tuhans. And then, you know, it's really interesting seeing the different two haunts from different generations and touching hands with them because different times and eras of GT, you've got different uh, flavors. So two Han, I, you know, I, I wear, I wear that title is given to me and I respect and honor that. And, but I uh, definitely want to give kudos to the two ones before me because they got a lot of stuff that even I'm just like GT showed that, but never tell me, told me that what that was. Um, I know there's a lot of debate on that title in itself, but uh, to on guru, uh, guru can mean a lot of things. I think, um, like guru in modern Chamande, um, you know, from um, from the line of Herman Sawanda, and uh, mm -hmm. and that 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 is another title of mine. Uh, there's guru in Balintawak, 
And to be a guru in Balintwak, you have to uh, be a level seven. Um, and that means you have completed the system from one through six. And then you brought yourself into where you brought a student up to also be one through six. They complete the system and then you test in front of GM Bobby for level seven. And you have to show your uh, 24 techniques um, that, uh, you know, that GM wants to see how you are incorporating it. Um, your exploration, your creativity, even your past backgrounds and other martial arts and what can you do and hey, show me, show me wh wh where you've taken it. And I really like that part of uh, the journey in Valentwalk. Um I think it, it evokes um, the exploration and creativity. Um, sometimes we get a little too cookie, cookie cutter. And I say this for all martial arts, I'm not talking about Valentwalk, I'm talking about martial arts in general. And when GM for, uh, you know, creates a program where you have to explore. I mean, you're coming up with stuff that might show your modern our niece, it might show your PTK, he might show your BJJ, your Muay Thai, whatever it is. And he wants to, he just wants to see, I mean, are you playing in within the blind walk in the format and all of a sudden you, should, you throw a Muay Thai kick? He's like, oh, I see where you fit that in. So to be as level seven, you've got to pass, um, you got to fight the panel, you got to show your techniques, you have to basically pass but to even pass that you have to make sure you bring a student of your own up wow. through the ranks and complete the system which shows that you're creating leaders too so that's guru um a crew yai yai means elder and so in muay thai crew means teacher uh or one who changes lives uh and so that was given to me from Majan suchart up in toronto and he brought muay thai to canada he's been you know, he has three world champions. He's been around the block. So uh, Ajahn Suchart, <clears throat> pretty big name, you know. Um, you know, I've had other Ajahns before me too, but he's, he is with, he is my lineage and my part of Nikonon Poem Association. Um, you know, like my first Ajahn was Ajahn Chai. So I've trained with him too. <clears throat> so you have that, um, what else am I? I'm like, what else am I? Oh. I'm a coach in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I do not call myself professor because I am just four stripe brown belt. So uh, black belt is right around the corner, literally right around the corner. So until that happens, I, I always correct students. Don't call me professor, um, it's coach. So that's where the coach comes in along with MMA, it's coach or any other stuff. There's other little things here and there, minor systems I play with and uh, have played with. I just um, don't brag about it or post it because you know, I didn't dedicate my craft to it. And so I don't think it's right for me to say, you know, oh, I did mm. this or I did that. Um, uh, I've de delved into it. You know, one of the first arts I've learned was Lameco. And, but, you know, I never mm. <clears throat> climbed up in the ranks. Professor Trigg was my teacher. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm very honored that I was part of that uh, and learned a lot. So Lameco was a great base. Um, what else? Did some KI, did some, you know, um man yeah, like yeah anyway so yeah those are different titles um brazilian jiu-jitsu muay thai fma within the fma system and then last but not least within the fma system and actually the first and i saved it for last but it's really one of the first uh, uh is dr kelly um uh, i'm uh I, he doesn't we don't call ourselves gurus or anything just senior instructor dr kelly um you know um as a senior instructor, you know, with the system, it's modern our needs, but it's progressive. And, uh, you know, what I, what I love about Dr. Kelly is, it's almost like he gives me permission to explore and adapt mm. um, all the arts. Um, he wants to see me bring in the Muay Thai, bring in the the grappling, the standing grappling, and, and he has that real world self-defense kind of mentality. Um, I met him actually at a Richard Bastilio seminar. So uh, Sigun Richard Bastilio, partnered me up with him and then I went to Dr. Seminar and I respectfully told my FMA instructor at the time that I want to follow Datu. And that's kind of the connection I had with that Datu and Professor Trigg and hence why Lameco is one of one of the first also systems I got exposed to. But I would say my first really diving into and and, and pursuing all the way to as as far as I can uh, with it was Dr. Kelly. So shout out, mad props to Dr. Kelly, Warden Defense System. And um, yeah, and, and there's a funny story to that. I think he tells that story. Um, I started teaching Dr. Kelly's system and he never gave me a rank. 
So it was probably years later, and uh, he said, um, "Hey, bring your um, bring your black belt because we have a little bit more of a um, traditional group coming, uh, Kyokushin Karate, and some other guys are seventh degree, eighth degrees." <clears throat> and he said, "Bring your gi and your belt so we can wear that." And uh, I said, "What belt? My Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu belt? My purple belt?" And, um, you know, and if you know BJJ, geez, I have six, seven years as a blue, like six, seven mm-hmm. years as a purple. So that was a long time ago. So uh, he goes, no, silly, the black belt I gave you. And I was like, that's you never gave me one. So, um, you know, it's kind of old school thought process there. And I really mm-hmm. loved it because there was no real, um, there, was no, there was no paper chasing, you know. Mm-hmm. I was honored that um, he asked me to teach, and then I just started teaching, and then he was just like, wait a minute, you needed your rank. And I think we've already killed that subject with many podcasts and many uh, Facebook posts on rank and skill of my rank and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, so that's kind of happened even with GT. Uh, I think some Tuhans told him that he was giving rank to my students, and I was zero rank. So they're like, how, how's that possible? Those are his students, and you're ranking this guy to guru or agalon, and you're not, and your your own relative is nothing. He's like, what? So you know, the only system that I did not that that did not happen was obviously GM Bobby's because he was so systematized in his mm, level the, one, level two, the level three, old and... <laughs> which was really awesome actually, by the way, and he really broke it down as simple as possible, and that's kind of why I'm here. He inducted mm-hmm. me, um, nominated me for uh, one of the awards that they present here at the Soka Ship Council at uh, Soka Ship uh, Frank Sanchez uh, uh, event here in Florida, and it was a Man of the Year award. And so, you know, your GM nominates you, you kind of, you kind of feel <laughs> you yeah, show yeah. up, you know. I guess you might want to show up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of uh, Kelly Ward. I had him on the last time I had him on. I, it just was one of the best episodes for a multitude of reasons. But mm-hmm. yeah, he's as real as they get. <clears throat> you know, the way he is so honest about my niece and this, I, I just have such profound respect for him. Um, yeah. yeah. Top notch guy, for sure. Um, what? Okay, let's just dive right into it. What is, um, you know, so the whole thing with Panatukan, Panajakman, you know, Dumag, all this, I mean, really stuff that came out of the Anasano blend, flourished into other areas and all that. Obviously, Guy had a hand in that, Hubid Lubid, if you go way back, depending on who you talk to. But um, what, you know, what is Filipino martial arts to you? Empty hands. Uh, to, to me, it's just, so, you know, the way it was introduced to me uh, wasn't even a terminology. It wasn't like, um, Okay, now we're learning Pangomot or Suntukan or, or you know, gosh, people name it so many names. Pangomot, mm-hmm. Suntukan, uh, Panantukan. So um, it was more like we'd flow and then the blade would disappear and then the hands would just come out. And there was a lot of limb destruction and, you know, uh, knife versus empty hand, empty hand versus empty hand. And, and I remember one of the sessions I had with GT, we were starting to kick and I'm like, there's kicking in FMA. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but mm-hmm. it was a different style of kick, a lot of groin kicks, a lot of, uh, and so we just started, uh, just, it was kind of just introduced in, in the flow of things. It wasn't like, today we are learning empty hand. Right. It was, you know, we went from knife, reverse knife, and then suddenly, you know, if the knife got disarmed or within the disarm, or it just started being introduced that way. And, and you know, uh, you, you, you hear that it's so very uh, um, a cliche, you know, your, your, any weapon in your hand is an extension of the hand or it's the empty hand. But then, you know, how deep are, do we really get into that? You know, so people, you know, learn from our instructors, but um, a lot of times, whether you're in Philippines learning for two weeks or a week or, or you're at a seminar, you know, I, I don't think people really explore that and really dove in deep or if not, they haven't had the, I don't know, the drive or the initiative to, to look at it from, okay, I need to look at it from this lens and where, you know, how does this all fit in? Rather, it's just this, it's, if the punch comes, you know, destruct, 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 mm-hmm. destroy, destroy. And then 
I, I think this is just maybe a higher level of martial arts thinking and uh, um, or a maturity in martial arts. When you reach a certain maturity level, you start, well, what if I do this? What about that? You know, what about that other hand? What about an elbow? What about what if they throw a knee at me? But all that comes from coaching, you know. You're, you're training fighters and you go in the ring, you come up with scenarios, you come up with mid-holding sequences and you're like, hey, southpaw to, to orthodox. Um, if they throw a cross or a cross, what if they do this? What if, what if they shuffle in? Or, and and you, you start exploring situations and then you test it. Uh, you, testing means, I mean, you're holding mitts, you're, you're putting shin pads and uh, shin guards and gloves and you're, you're sparring essentially. And you're like, yeah, that didn't quite work, you know? Mm -hmm my only how do i say this my only issue with with some of some of the stuff that's being taught as far as empty hand is you got to you got to test it somehow i mean you know it's uh, okay so here here's an example i just helped taught uh, at a mini mini camp at Bilintuak, the west coast mini camp and um, it was my turn to come up so uh, guru john soriano went up and then guru josh Fairman went up and then okay belton you're the closer so what are you going to do? I go, I don't know. What did you guys do? You know, that type of thing. Or I told them, whatever they do, I'm going to bite off of them. Um, and so I've, I've done this lately with seminars, and it's been kind of cool and uh, a little dangerous because if you don't prepare your material, you look like an idiot. So mm. fair warning to those who, who teach, you know, don't just come there ill-prepared. But Joe Natawad, who's a 145 Muay Thai champion, him and I were like, hey, tell you what, you just do your thing. I'll flow with what you just present. So <clears throat> the way your brain thinks, <clears throat> the way um, Guru John taught us sequence for, from, from a block, and then you got to you know, punyo to the hand when it's coming low, punyo to the hand when it's coming high. And, and so I saw that. I'm like, okay, cool. You know? And then I said, hey, let's, let's work from that base. And then I started playing what if scenarios. Mm -hmm. What if you hit the punyo to the hand, but they, re, they re, re, retract the right hand with a stick, and then they fire off again? What if it's a this? What if it's a that? You know, where do you add the foot trap in? And I just kept flowing and going and going and going. And then I, I, I added the, 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 the head manipulation and the joint lock um, that Guru Josh was showing. And I started blending. And then I, I, I started datuing the whole scenario. And if you've ever seen Dr. teach, he does that a lot. He does a lot where, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Inosanto does it. Guru Dan also does, does it where he does... Uh, you know, he has a base template of a move, and then he'll go into seven variations of that same oh, yeah. move. Seven and people just yeah. people just goes ah, my brain. But I'm like, you guys are missing the point. It's the base move. It's the base the yeah. base three count. So when when I took Guru John's move and I said, okay, if they withdraw that, because no one, if you if you touch hands with me and you do that, I'm pulling that back. But mm -hmm. what do we do when we drill? We leave it there. Yeah. So if you're holding mitts, you know what a mitt holder would do? Jab, cross, they would slap the side of your head if you don't bring your right hand back. Correct. So, you know, uh, and it's kind of weird, but you do that as a naturally as a mitt holder. But the question is, as a knife guy and an empty hand guy, do we do that? Do we, do we keep it honest? Is mm -hmm. there integrity in our, in our drilling system in some of these uh, empty hand drills? No, because what we do is when the punch comes and you go, you go, <laughs> and this is what happens right here. And so the empty head, this guy does 17 million. No, 17 counters. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, yeah. and then you're just like, and then the person. Yeah, I've seen that. See, so, I mean, I for demos, you. I get it for demonstrations, you know, you're putting on a show and all that, but. But yeah. at the same time, I, I do have to say, look at the presentation, and mm. this is where the strength comes in of having an open mind and not going, oh, that would never work. But look at the the timing, the sequence mm. patterns, because no matter what, if it's this arm and you're working three different limb breaks, it's the same as if it's this freaking arm. You mm. just have to just combine that pattern. So if I'm going to hit that arm, I just pick up the other arm. But people don't think like that, and then they get all, I don't know, become a dick and just be like, oh, you fucking never worked. That guy left the hand there. I'm like, well, yeah, dude, it's a target. When you play with the Mook Chong, it's the same thing. What, are all Wing Chun guys suck? I mean, come on, dude. You have to kind of visualize that. You have to look at it. You go, this is the right hand. That could be left hand. But what if I just hold my hand out there? That's my right and my left. This is the timing. 
and the visualization, your creativity. So when you mid holds the same thing, you know, if you're working the jab, okay, maybe you want to call the cross and you want to make sure they bring the right hand back, just slap them, you know, and, and so uh, tap their tap their elbow, so then they throw an uppercut, things like that. So, um, you know, I, I think um, I think there just needs to be a little bit maybe cross training in that sense, and maybe have somebody hold mitts for you, you hold mitts for them, and then just kind of go from there and just. See, see, start to look at the similarities and see where you can apply some of their principles and concepts and see if that can help your empty hand drills and your teaching and you, or even you as a student. So then when you receive information, you can go, well, you know, when I was boxing with that one guy, I don't know if that makes sense. You know, how do I make it make sense for me? Don't dog the system. Don't dog the FMA guy. Don't dog the boxing guy. Just go, how can I make this make sense? Yeah. And then, you know, then we get caught up in this, we go down that well in the tunnel of, you know, a fight is blah, 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 and all that stuff. Well, have you ever cornered a fight? I mean, I, I asked somebody's effort, I guess, have you ever sat there in the ring? And I don't even know how many fights I've cornered. And you're there in the moment. And, and you know, I look across the, the, the ring and I look at the other coach and he's yelling combos out. And I'm just shaking my head. And this is, this is, this is my criticism. How in the hell is your fighter in that split second listening to you, accessing information, and then throwing a combo back? It's too late. No. Everything's too dynamic. Everything's too dynamic. Yeah. So you take your drills, you take your, your muscle memory, and you speak on concepts. So the way I corner, and this maybe helps some of you guys if you're coaching, and this is me, so I, I don't really give a shit if you say, well, whatever, dude, do your thing, man. Uh, you know, because there's too many fucking egos here in FMA. So the way I corner is just say, look at the lead foot, look at the lead foot, look at his balance. And then I let my guy choose the time when he wants to chop that leg up. Mm. Or right hand tends to drop, right hand tends to drop. And then my guy will start setting it up and then bang, throw a hook and knock him out. But I don't go, throw the three. Throw yeah, three, two, hook. one. one two, three. <laughs> it's it's yeah. like, dude. Yeah, try try yelling it. try yelling combos in a stick fight. I mean, you really think they're no. You're in the know? moment. I mean, you're processing information. You're processing oh. him. He's moving in front of you. Now you're going to take that outside information and incorporate what you're. Yeah, it's, that's a mess, man. <laughs> so if if I was cornering a stick fighter, I would say I would say something like, you know, um, change your rhythm, change your rhythm, change your pattern. You know, mm -hmm. crash in, uh, uh, stay on the outside. Give them outside lines. Give them the low lines. Give them the low lines. Just whack, whack low. Come back high. We we take up top. I don't know. Whatever. So, I think you know. And I, I know it's not. We're not supposed to be talking to empty hand, but I mean, it all ties into yeah. It's all work. yeah. Yeah. It's all yeah, relevant. So yeah. <clears throat> um, so yeah. That, this is that's kind of my grief and 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 having that lens and having experience in that and as a coach and even myself back in mid nineties when I when I when I stepped in and fought it's. It makes a difference, and I'm not saying, you know, here's the here's the deal. Okay, I'm a Korean, and I've trained some really high level Muay Thai guys, and 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 I've had high level Muay Thai guys work with me, but I don't walk around saying Limpini champion, three time Limpini champion. I don't fucking need that validation mm -hmm. to, to teach you good Muay Thai, um, you know. But I do think you need to hold minutes. I do think you need to spar your students. I do think you need to get out there because. You can't express something if you've never really gone through it. And I'm not saying you need to get in a night. You don't need to get in a knife fight. You don't need to get into a empty hand situation. But you know what? If you want to get as real as it gets, and you don't want to walk in the street, go. Where can I find a knife fight? And you go. Well, oh, Seven Eleven's open right now, and there might be some thugs right around the corner. You know what? Then hold some mitts, spar somebody, get punched in the fucking face, and feel what it feels like. Because that pressure testing. Uh, it's it's going to open up your brain and you're not going to get mm -hmm. comfortable. You know, you know, it's weird. If you watch somebody who really holds mitts or really spars, they are so aware of the range. They don't just let, I, I, I notice I do that to myself. Like I'm walking in, or I'm with somebody and then I'm just moving in and out with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm, it's, it's the same thing we teach when we're sparring. When you say, hey, there's like a string with your belly button. You don't want to break that string. You stay with them. Mm. And I naturally, you naturally do that, but you won't know it if you don't, you know, hold. <clears throat> so no, it totally I makes think, sense. Yeah. Some people mm. ask, "What's the connection?" and and uh, uh, how that how can that help? You know, hey man, I'm not telling you to become a boxing coach or even move into boxing or Muay Thai or whatever, but you got to dabble in it a little bit. 
And if you play stick, you know, put on some freaking hockey gloves, put on a helmet, and whack a freaking head. That mm -hmm. way, that head actually moves away, and then you get punished for overcommitment. Mm -hmm. You get punished for for a false move or a false step or a, a, a over preemptive strike or whatever it is that you do. And then you can go, man, I need to explore. And you go back to the lab. And yeah. you go back to the lab. And the lab work is where you grow as a martial artist. That's why I don't think I can ever get bored. And I think training fighters is just so damn, I mean, it's it's a pain in the ass. Fighters are big babies sometimes. You know, coach, you know, my food, my nutrition, my weight. Well, but outside of that, as a, as a coach, selfishly speaking, it's exciting because every fighter is so different in their profile, their height, their weight, the way they move, their their right hand, left hand, their kicks are this, their knees are that, and and you start looking at human movement, and your brain is constantly like profiling fighters. It's like if I had a street fighter and I had all my characters, I'm like, oh, that's like a Ryu, that's like a Ken, that's like a Guile, that's like a. As for you street fighter fans out there, you know, that's like a, that's like that guy, and so then. When you have that guy, I don't care who you spar. You start you start building that experience level, and then you start getting better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so so the whole empty hand thing, and it, it's <clears throat> in the quickest way to get better. Empty hands, hold some mitts, get get out there, and go box, go move around, and and feel that because no one's gonna take a thrust and stab you and just leave their hand there. You know, yeah. I mean, go 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 talk to a piper guy. <laughs> Wait, I'm definitely going to do this. So when I'm coming off the floor, I'm going to, I'm going to stay right there. <laughs> you, uh, you, you do that? I'm taking your Piper card away. <laughs> dear, dear Nigel, dear Lloyd. Uh, <laughs> sorry to say, he needs to be penalized. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, thrust. Boom. No, no, point taken. Literally, point taken. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. It's, and this is some scary shit. You're yeah. a box of the guy who's just, who's just like, pop, 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 you know, pop, pop, pop. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's yeah. coming at you. So, yeah. Uh, you know, right. if you have experience seeing that, um, yeah. I mean, you know, you kind of already segued into it. And we spoke on this briefly in the test run. And um, I want to get your opinion on this. I think it's what I found when I was first exposed to, you know, the Filipino empty hand, um, it was I was it was introduced to me as a separate module, uh, knowing that there's the weapon carryover and the translation on that. But it was really like, you know, you're doing split entry, you're doing goon teams, you're doing come back with orbit this. I mean, you know, all the different sectoring and lines and all that. And then the low line pond jockman and then the do mod push pull and some of the other stuff. And there, but what I did find, you know, at the time I didn't realize it because I wasn't having much success pulling it off. And I'm I'm talking circa late '90s. Um, I went against a golden uh, golden gloves guy, and it wasn't pretty. <laughs> it just was not pretty. I gotta be honest. It, I'm just like, what the freak, man? I'm spending this time doing this stuff, and I just got shelled. But then the light bulb went off. Oh wait. If I train some boxing, so what's your lens on that as an initial platform before actually going deep, I guess, into FMA? Do you, I mean, I feel Muay Thai, Western boxing, a good platform to join. Your thoughts? Yeah, you know, um, I've seen guys go one way, then the other, and then the opposite direction, and then come back. Um, I think, um, let's see, what was my first... You know what? I started doing MMA in 90, 94 mm. when I moved to San Jose, California. So, um, and was fighting a, fighting a lot. But back then it was different. Um, back then, and those who know, um, UFC was in the single digits, UFC 6. I mean, it came out in the first one was 93, right? 93. So my classmate was in UFC 6. And the whole, you know, legendary dojo storming that was a real thing mm -hmm. people who don't know and they hear about it dojo storming it was a fucking real thing we would have guys come in the school challenge the shit out of us especially knowing we've been to the ufc and it was mm -hmm. and you know my teacher thought it was kind of funny 
put the 18 year old kid from Guam <laughs> in the middle of the floor and whoops a mass. And so he did that because our UFC guy was six foot eight, 320 pounds. Well, of course, you know, you want to challenge him, but yeah. just to prove a point, he said, you know, take on Belton over there. He's, he's a 18 year old kid. He's a buck man. Back then I was a buck 65. Now I'm just a svelte 200 and okay. Mm. <laughs> so, so he, uh, uh, I would, I would take these guys on and we had no time limit. <clears throat> there was no time limit, no weight class and you either tap out or got knocked out. That's, mm. and we didn't wear any, any, any gloves. It was bare knuckle, bare, bare shin, bare everything. And, and we kicked you to the groin too, which, hey, FMA. So I kicked you in the fucking nuts. <laughs> you were a big dude. I was like, screw that, dude. Hey, it's UFC rules. Bang, pop, pop. And I would beat the shit out of them until they just said stop. Or So they either joined our school or didn't. So anyway, that was uh, um, the mid-90s. And then FMA um, came just no, not, not too long after that because my teacher was under – Ernie Rages Sr. and had exposure to FMA. Then when I went to college at Oregon State in 96, picked it up even more than I really picked it up in the early 2000s. But anyway, so my, my, my transition was more the MMA, boxing, um, Muay Thai yeah. into FMA, then back into and then heavily back into it. By the way, I'm going to Italy, representing as a coach for Team USA for Muay Thai. And I got uh, coaching for Team USA, and uh, oh, some awesome. so five of my fighters will be fighting for USA. Um, so, I think if you go the other way around, two boxers and put a knife in their hand, when the light bulb clicks, um, it just get, it's just a wonderful situation. So, story, story time. My FMA guys were working on um, uh, a thrust defense against a thrust, and we're just doing the typical FMA stuff. Mm. And I said, okay, now you got a thrust from the high line. Okay. So my, um, my student walks by because the next class is starting. It's Muay Thai. And I literally picked this guy who had zero fights. Just, just to prove a point. Mm -hmm. I said, Kellen, Kellen, come over here. He's like, yes, coach, or yes, Kriai. And I said, hey. And I said, hey, FMA guys. I go, uh, let me go run to my office. So I grabbed some cert knives just <laughs> for safety, right? Mm -hmm. I go, um, Callan, your job, okay, is to stab him. <laughs> He's mm -hmm. like, what? I don't do knife. I go, no. I want to jab his chest as fast as you can and jab his belly as fast as you can. Just jab. Okay, and they're like, just jab? I go, just jab. And so he grabs the certain knife and he keeps it right here and he just went, whap, 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 whap. And he did like an uppercut, which is a thrust thrust to the belly so yeah, yeah. dude my my guys were like bleeding out of so many holes <laughs> and I'm about so, a boxer. They, were, they were so stressed out they were just like what the hell yeah and I mean, it was the funniest freaking thing ever um yeah i'm not surprised and, so, I mean. and this was a guy with zero fights he just trained his hands so much so i just gave him a target i said jab his chest and jab his belly or uppercut his belly so the uppercut at least resembled a thrust and did he was just like i go dude you guys just got killed <laughs> but you're yeah. all knife guys aren't you aren't you knife guys and so then i started kind of cross promoting muay thai and boxing and stuff like that um a, a, a fighter known as a you know he was a knockout king of the pacific northwest northwest at the time and he knocked out three of his the last three fights he had he knocked the guys out cold I was sparring him, and I told myself, I'm like, dude, man, this guy's right hand is so freaking powerful, so powerful, but he's going to throw kind of a right hook, overhandish kind of move. I go, what if I just punch his fucking bicep if I gunting his ass? And this is, goes back to that question there. Uh, it was on a Facebook comment. I was, yeah, yeah. And so I didn't do – and here's this is, this is the problem, okay? FMA box. Gunting. I didn't do that. I just went bang. Mm. It was that quick. I kept his hand up for a, a parry. I didn't go traditional gunting. I was here and I went boom. I just yeah. hit his bicep so hard, he it dead it uh, it deadened his arm, and then I just kicked the shit out of his leg. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it works. It works both ways. I think if you if you um, you approach traditional knife. 
uh, my opinion, it gets so layered and gets so deep, you know, as you learn all the thrusting patterns and this mm. and that. But if you just approach boxing, it's quicker to learn. It's faster. Um, it's really simple. Jab, cross, hooks, uppercuts. And then you go to knife. I think that to me would be a more a, of a of advantageous route than going. I, I mean, totally I spent agree. three I'm years. Do it. Look at Piper. We have what we call yep. double taps. Uh oh, here we go. Jab, cross, hook, upper, yep. jab, hook. I mean, so you you are on the right track. Why is Piper mm -hmm. so efficient? Because one of the key things ingredients of Piper is boxing. <laughs> You're totally right. It, 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 absolutely 100 um, percent yeah and the thing is you know the way i understood piper and correct me if i'm wrong you know from my limited experience with piper is i don't i don't even call it a martial art i call it a killing system yeah. i tell people yeah. it's not a it's a system yeah from the streets and from the prisons a system because yeah. you can't call it an art it's it's, it's, it's a fucking just a plain ass system of killing it is um, it is an ambush predatory system and make no doubt about it i mean this is you know and this is why when you see look at piper thank god and i hope it stays this way from years to come we won't get watered down by drills but absolutely it's tactic based the offense is the defense it is 100 all true yeah and if you look at the stabbing patterns i mean it's all very motor efficient it's strong side mm -hmm. and like nigel told me why would Look at the backhand of a tennis. Look at the forehand. Which is the stronger, stronger uh, delivery of that shot? It's a forehand, With not the, the backhand. Yeah. So you got that bang. Oh yeah. You know? oh, yeah. So, hundred uh, yeah. percent. And and you know, you guys want to get good at knife? Go take some Piper lessons, man. You know, yeah. I know some Piper guys. Yeah. <laughs> Incidentally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I, I think you touched upon something that's like, you know, like, like take some boxing punches, put a knife in there and look how more proficient you will get. Uh, yeah, no argument here. Uh, so which kind of segues way into the, what you just referenced that uh, the thread there in FMA discussion, um, the Goontings versus Destructions kind of came up and all that. So my idea was the way it was given to me again circa late 90s and all that where if i'm doing this i'm doing this this whatever the destructions I'm, I'm having them run into the elbow as you know but if i'm scissoring sectoring all that more on the goontings of a crossing kind of thing um what do you say what do you say on that i just use the examples that fighter i i gunting just fucking like you're just coming, like you just came across and wow so if a person wanted to really know, you stand like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna come at you, and I just do the hardest hook ever on your bicep, and you tell me how that feels. It's um, not this. It, it, it's not this. No. It's not this. It's bang, and I'm gonna hit you so hard your bicep. It's, I want to see. I want to see what your reaction is. Because I did it with a 16 ounce glove, and his yeah. arm deadened. And no. I, enough time, and I enough time for me to fucking kick him so hard because yeah. this guy was a knockout king, and this is somebody who really tried to take my head off. So does a gunting work? Hey man, you know what? You can call this a gunting. You can call this a gunting. You can call that a gunting. So yeah. which one is it? You know. So it's yeah, it's I'm not. A board with, and, 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 with that man, like Gould, David Gould, my Lameco coach, did that me with empty hand. He didn't go, of course, full out. I would have been freaking. My arm would have been dead. But I mean, I'm telling you, man, instant pain distraction. So <laughs> when Rubio Rubio visited this conversation, uh, he challenged some of us to put out a video, and I put one out. Um, I had a guy put on a, a, a glove, and I said, "Jab me full on, like full mm -hmm. speed, just fucking hit me." And I go, bang. I go, just touch my head, just just so you're there. Bang. And I go, okay, cool. And then I go, he didn't even know what I was going to do. I went, bang. And then he goes, dude. <laughs> he said, good thing. <laughs> but I did it with this right here. I turned my knuckles in and I just went, bang. <laughs> so yeah. he, just went, he goes, and it just bought enough time. But th think about fighting in general. Think about fighting yeah. in general. One move leads to the next. You snap a jab. You do a double jab. It's all setups. So does a gunting work? You're not going to end a fight with a gunting. 
You're That's what I mean by the consequence, right? It's not gonna be a fight ending thing. No. It'll give you pain diminishment, pain distraction to go into something else. I think that's fair. You 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 get momentary lapse to make yeah. you add another. I call it beats because I talk to my fighters with beats. Mm. Bop, bop bop bop. It's gonna give you two beats more. It's gonna give yeah. you a half a beat, and when you have a half a beat on somebody, that's a knockout punch. Yeah. But if you're going beat for beat, jab cross, I go parry parry recover. I'm matching a beat for beat. But if I go jab pause, bop bop bop, bop and I light you up, your defense is all out of whack. Yeah. yeah. I, you I know, so comments in here that. I kind of neglected. Folks, I'm sorry. Usually I try to stay on top of this. Okay. I think you already kind of answered Morgan's question here. And his question is, what is the order of progression? You train somebody a knife. Do you teach them boxing empty hands first, then progress to a blade? Or do you introduce empty hand solutions versus a blade first? Or do you teach how to use a knife first, digress backward to empty hands? I tell them to touch their nipples and their earlobes and then we train. Okay, no. so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were going to do it. So, Morgan, this is what I do. Um, if somebody wants, um, if somebody was wanting uh, FMA, I don't force other arts or systems in into it with into my teaching. I actually slip it in there. Okay, okay. and how I do it is, I'll do. The typical, let's say Sabayan. Let's go call it Sabayan, right? Sabayan, okay. Yeah, you're Sabayan, you know, you get your, your moves. And then I actually bring up points. And I just kind of just give scenarios. It's the same way I teach when I do Muay Thai. I go, you got the teep. But here's how you you use the teep to fake into a cross. I bring up things to, to bring attention that that one move isn't the all and be all move, all, all mm. and be all move. I also teach them that there's variations to it and you can explore and go from 1A to 2A to two, you know, it can branch out. Because okay. if you look at a jab, cross, hook, okay, let's just keep it simple. Jab, cross, hook, okay, whatever. Or jab, cross, hook, round kick. Okay, so I got my bop, 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 and then I kick. Okay, I go, hey, you know what you can do? You can go bop, 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 fake the kick, come back with an uppercut. I'm like, mm. oh, I go, you can go kick, use the body rotation, throw a hook, cross hook. And so knife, same thing. You go, look, you got your stab, but you can go into a, th uh, a slash and then you can come back here, trap it, fake that, change your angle, come back up with a thrust. So yeah. like, oh, I mean, so do I teach? I, I don't say you guys need to do boxing. I'd say it would benefit you, but mm. I don't make my guys do boxing because they're not competitors. I don't, I don't really, it's their journey, it's their journey. I don't care if they, if they want to learn only knife, fine. It's only knife. But I will say, hey, you should take boxing. You should I've told my, this. I've yeah. told my Muay Thai guy, hey, you should grapple. You should do some, I don't know, BJJ, folk, I presume Jiu-Jitsu, I'm a striker. <laughs> I was like, dude, you know what? When you grapple somebody and you control their body and their head manipulation, yeah. that'll help your clinch in Muay Thai. Imagine that. Oh. Huh? And so... <laughs> I suggest to them, I don't force them, but if you're a fighter of mine, I will yeah. tell your ass to get there and do that. But I don't say, hey, stick fighter. Uh, so Henry, Guru Henry Cabillon, and if you're watching this, Guru Henry, he's a national cha uh, world champion, stick fighter. Okay. He moved here from Cali. He teaches at my gym. And you know what he does on Saturdays? What's that? He does footwork. He does footwork. Okay. And you know what? Okay. If you took... You, you, if you look, there's it looks like he's boxing, he's shuffling back and forth, you know. He's, yeah, and I'm like, and I'm like, Henry, and the reason I go, the reason why I want you teaching, and by the way, different system, different lineage in my own academy. You think I give two shits? It's going to help my students, it's going to help. I told my fighters, you can see Henry, you got to work the long range and you mm -hmm. see if you can touch him, and you cannot touch him. He's a world champion, he's um. Oh, I forget who's under. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, Felix Rolls. Um, I'm not sure. Felix Rolls. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure, but um, there's a there's a group down in Cali. He's with them. There's like a, three or four of them, but he does a lot of the the, the stick fighting competition mm -hmm. stuff. Great footwork. Great, great timing. Great range management. And it goes back to that word again. Everything in a fight is range management. If you can manage range, whether you're with a knife or you're oh. punching, it's range management. So the good thing is 
evasive, you know, uh, same time movement, it's changing angles, it's limb destruction, it's all of that, right? So can you add that into your repertoire? Totally. Can this, can this add into your repertoire during a punch? Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Hard elbow, break wrist. Why not? Right. Two of my fighters have two of my fighters have uh, boxers fracture. They broke this part of the wrist because they hit a hard object. You think about it, right? So if you're hitting an elbow, it right, makes sense. I mean, um, so know, can yeah. it work? Yeah, totally. I mean, do you have to really time that and really pinpoint the targeting? And you got to drill the shit out of that. Have the guy wear a glove and have them fully punch at you, not this. And then go. Uh, 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 yeah, it's not pleasant. Even with a glove on, I'm telling you, no, you're gonna it, feel it. Feel good. You're gonna feel it. Yeah, I mean, if you, feel I, good. yeah. <clears throat> um, so, you spoke on yesterday. You went into a little detail as far as mid work and some of the variations you can do as far as holds to get a student acclimated to enhance their performance. Um, can you give some explanation on the variations that you, which you were speaking of? Yeah, so boxing combinations, um, you know, if you got, again, you got your jab, cross hook, your hook is just really a slash. So, you, you know, when you, when you start to, um, thinking in the, in the knife mindset and you want to come up with boxing combos, just kind of put together your combinations in such a manner that it, it flows well with the knife because the knife changes everything as far as your, how you move a little bit. Um, it's not, it's not just an impact base, but it could be. And, um, I think I have a couple of videos out where I said I can throw a hook and I can hit with the puño mm. of the knife, or I can throw a hook and I can slash. So I just, I just mentioned that. And if it's, you know, if it's what, whatever it is that you're trying to invoke, make sure you just mid hold properly. And then you have that, the person visualizes that rather than if they're punching like this, they're holding the knife down here. So they yeah. gotta punch like that, gotcha. you know, which is a which is a muay thai hook. So the muay thai hook does this because the elbow's right there. Mm. So you wanna you wanna throw that in there. Um, you also have to keep in consideration on the the offenses and the defenses and some of the drills. If there's if there's counters back, and you're holding mitts and you're trying to tap them, you don't want to train your guy to double pillar because that'd be dumb move to double pillar when you have somebody has a knife. No, I so yeah. a lot of a lot of pairing, a lot of head movement, a lot of mm -hmm. body evasions, body mm -hmm. flexibility. So you have to keep that in mind when you mid hold. Don't don't get them boxed in a system or a martial arts where they they start doing like cover, cover, cover. If you want to cover yeah. like that? That's fine. I'll slash your forearm, or I'll, I'll just pipe her right through your. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, right. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna clear it out and come right behind it. <laughs> so put your arm up there. Put your Go ahead. <laughs> How many times are you going to pull out that Piper knife in this interview? You know what it is? I'll tell you why. And folks, please bear with me. I'm not a psycho. Um, yeah, you are. <laughs> You're a psycho. <laughs> so when I'm kind of doing stuff on the computer, a lot of times I'll kind of, you know, work my shim or stuff like this, hand manipulation. So it kind of gives me something to do what I'm doing, but that's really the only reason I'm not... I'm not disturbed, Juan Belton. <laughs> all they all they see is your hand down here doing this, and they're like, "What's yeah. going hey, on?" Hey, so you were saying? <laughs> like, why, they're like, "Why does it jingle? What is that jingling sound?" Is, what's he got going on down there? <laughs> so when I'm walking around in the store. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome oh my god now you're, you're you know the, you know you know the funny thing is only piper guys can really appreciate yeah, like, what, what is he doing what is he doing <laughs> why is he why is he doing this shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god oh, i gotta i gotta train i gotta get back to my piper training i oh, you know why i know you yeah, but you know what? I think you're so far ahead of the curve more than you think you are. Because you understand 
from the Tell boxing me. lens. Yeah, you, you, please, uh, let's take some time here to address this. <laughs> so, <laughs> like you're knowing that you're coming here. Oh, wait, that can turn into that. I don't want to, I don't want to stab you, but right in that line and then into there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You also know that, you know, by throwing this, this is where it really could be coming. You know what I mean? So I think personally, mm -hmm. compliment you, I think you're further along than you think you are. So. Ooh, I like it. So I should work on my. <laughs> yeah, you got no. So here's the homework. When you're down there with Bobby. <laughs> no, because he's going to go, oh, you want the karaoke? Okay, let's go sing. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Bell wants to sing. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, I, tell, I know. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we died. My fault. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> another thing about uh, going knife and mid holding, my fighters post a lot and they frame a lot. So, again, we talk about long guard or boy tie. Mm. I'll have them light you up. <clears throat> they'll light you up and then they'll frame and they trap your arms. So I teach my fighters. Sorry, no. I got to go into a belt. And <clears throat> you mean I come here and I frame out like this and then there? <laughs> <laughs> it came out again. Oh, shit. Oh, this is great. All right. You know what? It's disappearing. I am actually throwing this. No, 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 no. Keep it there. I, I want to see if I bring something up again that just pulls it out. So with the fighters, especially when you've had them against the ring and uh, the posts and the ropes, so the, the guys will cover. So we frame and we push up and then their hands go up and we go, bang, mm. liver shot, boom. And then they bring their hands down and go right across to the face. And the cool thing is about Muay Thai, elbows. I got a question because, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I always wanted to ask somebody <clears throat> who has vast experience in training and knows the rules in the ring. Is this allowed? So whether, regards if it's boxing or time, if I make a conscious effort to clear arms down here and then go over that, is that legal? Oh, hell yeah. Muay Thai, we do it all the time. So, box, so, so referees, boxing, like, you know, WBA, whatever, totally legal? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so my guys will elbow crash into your double pillar block and then strip interesting and then so think about it, it goes pop boom see that so elbow clear and you're just using bouncing off of that block and then look at this boom clear elbow elbow up as you're in the inside line so that's allowed okay i for every reason i thought i don't know why i thought it but that was illegal. So the rep was on a far corner and he didn't see you. You can kind of just, you know, do that or whatever. Yeah. But wow. So, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking from Muay Thai, especially because we do that. We clear, we clear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, we'll, no. we'll slap it straight down. We'll come in with the elbow. We'll clear it. Um, so uh, and boxers do it too. You know, the lead hand, they'll slap it down and come with a cross. Yeah. 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 So, all, right, all right. Yeah. No. You just can't, oh. you just can't, you can't hold their hand. You can't. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Morgan said, "Bust so, out the sacks." <laughs> <laughs> not against that knife right there. That's more funnier. <laughs> yeah, it's not a drinking game. See, and El Capi and Dean's hands drink. Oh boy. <laughs> so, so mint holding um, and, and and knife. So, if again, if you're going to to draw concepts into it and uh, slashes and clearing lines. So, if if I get if I want them to work on that hook for the slash okay so slash will come across and then you can clear it okay. so you just hold so you hold here so the hook comes across and then you hold here again okay or you hold here and then let them press that down and you hold for a cross oh once they then so, you leave gotcha. gotcha yeah because then they're coming across they're trapped in the hand with the knife and they're coming with the other hand the the live hand but you have to come up with that and, and the important part is as a mid holder you have to get the proper the proper feedback and the mechanics you know, one thing I give shit to about my students when they pad hold, I'm like, you guys don't pad hold like they're fighting. You just stand there and you go, round kick, round kick, jab cross. I go, dude, step back. Because if he's really jab crossing, you'd be like, you'd be coming back or even if you get hit. Mm -hmm. So then I, I, I make them move. I make them take a shot with a kick and they hold the tight pads and then they, they step back a half a step 
So it forces the guy to keep moving forward. Hmm. Another thing I teach my students is don't jam your fighter. Can you imagine stick fighting if we didn't do long strokes on our hmm. low range? And yeah. we do this, we do this, you know, unless you're into a blood talk system, like, you know, I know the type of mina guys are really tight in, but so the same thing too, when you're mid holding, you don't want to jam their punches. So then they're going half, they're going halfway out. So Correct. you, you, okay. you kind of meet them 15% of the way, they come 85% of the way. Gotcha. The more advanced guys, I'll literally hold the mitt right here to my face, like to the side, and they'll do the jab cross here and I'll float my left hand out and I'll slap them if their hands don't come back. Or I'll throw a jab and then they'll parry that down and hit here with the two. They'll hit with the two and then I'll cover it and they'll hit me in the three. So their hook is actually in range for the head rather than mm. two, three. Look at my three. Look at the distance. Right. So, wow. so training training to, for reality, and that's this is how I use the word reality, is real range management. I don't go reality, self-defense, concrete, mm -hmm. and fucking blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, dude, I'm still working with the guys working within the confines of a sport. That sport movement patterns and 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 training property will translate to that whatever knife or even in the street. Oh, when, I, when, they, when they throw a cross here with the right hand and they throw a left hand hook, I just cover, you know. But it also teaches me, because selfishly speaking, I'm parrying and covering. So, but I just tell them don't don't throw a hard hook because I want to keep my my head get jostled, you know. But no. but but still, it's it's there's some creative ways to do that. There's creative ways to create um, uh, situations. You want no, to do a hook to the body? That's a slash to the belly as yeah. you're throwing your hook around their head, so they duck low, they come under. Yeah, so, so knife boxing boxing and all that good stuff there's ways to create programs or or drills because drillers make killers and to develop skill sets rather than saying level one da 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 da, da level two you know uh, this and that format number three just you know you got your jab your cross your hook your uppercuts and you know what just translate that just translate that and and then have them flow into patterns mitten hold pop 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 freestyle mm -hmm. use their eyes and then just see if they start to make the connection. The uppercut is just a slash up with the knife, you know, trap. Yeah, them. yeah, no, I, I, no argument here. I mean, I, yeah, I, you know, what further, as we mentioned, further substantiate that with me and clarify to me was, you know, through the Piper lens. And here we got a question here from Glenn. And Glenn's question to you is, um, how long does it take to be a good mitt holder partner? You know, Glenn, for nine hundred ninety-five dollars and ninety-nine cents, you I will sixty, be sixty, sixty day, <laughs> 60 day will money. Be, <laughs> the ultimate. 60, yeah, give me sixty days, and you will be the best mint holder ever. Um, you know what? Honestly, um, I I can't put a time frame to it. I'm gonna use a couple of my students. Never did never did martial arts. He mm. came to me during COVID. And he's a pretty good mid holder. It took him, he's approaching his third year with me. So he's about two and a half years and I'm still fixing his mid holding. He's good, he's good. And <clears throat> anybody that comes to him and does a private, cause he's a, he's a junior crew, um, won't, won't tell the difference. Now, my pro guys or some guys who fight for one championship or mm -hmm. some of these, these big venues, they can tell the difference. So when you say how long does it take to get good, what are you looking for? But it means a good to, 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 to help the general population, to train fighters, pro fighters, or the highest level of fighters. Because when you have guys who, um, who are just like, I want to learn how to box, you know. One, mm -hmm. mid-holding is mid-holding, but if you're not correcting their form, you're just a target and they're using bad form to hit the target. So you also have to be a good coach and, and, and teaching the proper delivery of a punch, the proper mechanics of a hook. So uh, you have to learn both sides of the fences. And I wouldn't just say be good at holding mitts. I can pick numerous YouTube videos of guys holding mitts and they're just shitty, shitty form on their striker. They're just like, pop, 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 and they're just like, mm. and it's just like, what is that dude? Their thumbs are up or they're not, they're not making a fist. And, so I don't know, Glenn. Um, that really is a very, very open-ended, broad question. And I think if you invested in learning how to punch properly, learn the hook properly, learn the other side of it, 
you know, if you like, you learn sabayang, you need to learn the other side of sabayang. You can't just teach the one side. Mm. If you're doing balintawak, you got to learn how to feed. You learn how to receive. So the exactly. mid holding, mid holding is is a it's like a it's a, you know, it's um um, it's a two and two thing. You know, it's together. So, I would say maybe two years. But I, I but basic mid holding, I can teach you easily in a short period of time. You know, and this, and there's 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 a you have that PayPal uh, address where they send your mon the money to. Them. <laughs> actually, it's Strikers Guide. I have a video out of Strikers Guide to do pad holding. Yeah. So strikersguide.com awesome. and dynamic striking too. I have two two platforms. Okay. Two. Yeah. All right. We also spoke on yesterday. Um, we you kind of touched upon already, but you know, again, like really finding out how this stuff works, the bridging to functionality of pressure testing, and said like, okay, uh, you know, go out there and pull out spar, and it's just it's ugly, it's messy, and it's just a, a disaster. Um, so are you the mindset of like individualizing things, taking particular things and working on them before more stuff gets added per se? So what's your lens on that? I'm trying to understand the question. So the question is, so being, um, without the latter part of it, you spoke on the bridging of functionality and pressure testing from the, F, from the lens of FMA empty hand, right? In mm -hmm. other words. A lot of it, and you know, is very pattern oriented. Okay, we're gonna go here, then we're gonna go to orbis, and then we might go hook, cross, hook. You know, depending on the structure. Okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna go here to finger jab. I'm gonna sector down to here. You know, just for examples. But it's giving a lot of times in that package in. But I think there's a reluctance to a pressure test to bridge it to functionality of pressure testing. What say you on that? Instead of like, how can I just go out there and just spar? I mean, like, do you individualize a particular thing? Or like, how do you bridge the gap to functionality or pressure testing? You got to create games and and mm -hmm. and, and strip, add little rule sets here and there, and strip away those rule sets or add variability, and and uh, uh, diversify that game. For example, here's one. Okay, you two are gonna spar, but you cannot do any other combination unless you throw twenty jabs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. three minutes. It's the same thing, take FMA. You cannot hit any other part of the body till you, have, you tap their head five times. Mm, okay. So now they're forced, they're forced into finding that, that strike, that mm. angle, whatever it is, right? So go back to the Muay Thai, we, I just played this recently. Uh, a jab doesn't count if it hits the air. A jab doesn't count if it's parried. A jab counts if it touches you, and if you, mm -hmm. if you cover and it touches you, that counts. It has to touch you. You can jab the body, you can jab the head. So you see these guys going at it, but then they're very careful because they don't want to give you the jab. So they're trying to, and they're trying to dump out their 20 jabs because once number 20 hits, pop, man, they start lighting you up with kicks. And then it puts a stress load. I'm like, I'm at 18. I got to get two more jabs out. And you start looking for it. You start really adjusting your footwork, your timing. Mm. So FMA, you can play the same way too. You can do something like um, only hand shots, you know, mm. you know, uh, only left hand. Right. Touch, touch, touch the right knee. Touch the touch the head and the knee, and then you right. win. So as you start working these things, they start the brain gets focused on trying to get to that 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 end result that they're that you'd be surprised what they come up with and you're like dude mm -hmm. i didn't know you had that in you and then you can see where the drilling comes in you can see how much time they put into the muscle memory their movement patterns and then also their adjust adjustment on speed timing and accuracy and power and precision that's a ptk thing stapp stop <laughs> speed timing accuracy precision precision and power but okay. you can pull back in the power keep the speed so you can just kind of tap so you're not yeah, okay. cracking because grand tone broke this finger <laughs> Ooh. So he goes okay this demonstration this demonstration for sparring okay so when you spar oh when you see you can do this and you just whip the stick like that <laughs> oh, oh, no. and he goes never mind he's from, <laughs> Cyan. He's, he's from Iloilo. he can handle the pain <laughs> he's also my cousin and i was like 
JT, fuck, man, that hurts. So I told uh, one of the two Huns to get me duct tape, and I duct taped my fingers <laughs> together. And then he goes, okay, you're fighting first. I'm like, what? You just broke my finger. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and I have a plane to catch, but I fought. Yeah. And I fought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I took him down with a BJJ move, too. <laughs> I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, so you play games. And then when you think about playing games, it's fun. You know, mm. there's it's it's really simple, a simple thing. Accomplish this one thing, and then you layer. But if you just say go spar, they're just like the brain's like. Oh, That's what I mean. It's just it's not specific enough, and then you're just gonna be a mess. Here, I got a question for you. Like, okay, yeah. let's say, okay, what would you say how to approach with your fighters, and you want them to get good at this? Okay, guys, I want you to get, I want you to get good at this, and then immediately off this, shoot out to there. Like, so, how would you like? In your realm of coaching and all that and creativity, what would you do if you wanted to really get good at destruction, whether it was a vertical or horizontal? And immediately after that, they're finding a back fist or there. Like, how would you isolate that for them? You know, where it's just mm. not chaos or just a disaster. Um, it's like music. You just ramp up the speed. Okay. So, so you just kind of show it, show it. It's like four, four time, paying, paying. Pain. Then you go faster, then you faster. Then you go random. <laughs> okay, random. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's one way to approach it. Um, my fight, I, dude. I put James Brown on, and I have my fighter shadow box to James Brown. Okay. And then I'll change the music tempo, and I'll change the, the rhythm. <laughs> there it is. I'm putting <laughs> James. I'm putting James Brown. <laughs> 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 So, so what the, what you, bring the out, the, you bring out the worst in me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the best in you, man. So the, I'll, I'll put on some music that that has a rhythm, that has a certain timing, so they can find the half beats. Mm. They can find the triplets. They can find the the grace notes, the eighth notes. Okay. Uh, and like you know, music it. music theory, man. If you guys invest a little bit of music theory, you your fight game will improve. You know, I make my fighters warm up to Tchaikovsky and Baroque, nice. Baroque era music because the wavelength of your brain increases learning because they, it hits a certain, uh, I don't know if it's a frequency or the certain, um, the, the way that, that it was composed, okay. it uh, has uh, effects on learning. So How I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a geek like that. So No, I think um, it's fantastic to get, get creative like that and tap into other resources to enhance your fighter's performance. I think that's great. Wow. Yeah. So, so games, uh, what else? Um, I will, uh, um, I will change, I will change range in the middle of the drill. So what happens is this here. I just did this the other day with one of my fighters. So this fighter's job is I, w I would say, okay, I'm coming in. Okay. We'd shuffle, we'd shuffle back and forth. Mm. And I come in, I just want you to lead, lead leg, teep me. Okay, it's just teep. So teep is a push kick. The same way, too, with the stick, you can, as I come in, whack, just hit the hand, right? And so let's just, again, we're just making up scenarios. Yeah, yeah. And then so so I come here and I see her, and this is a, and she's a 6 and 0 two-time uh, national champion. She's she's a 12-year-old girl, wow. but she's a badass. And so I went like this, I hopped in, and then instead of hopping in, or I'm sorry, right when she tries to time me coming in so she can teep me, I don't come in. So I go back, forth, back, and then and then I go, sorry, back, and then instead of going forth, I back up. So she goes, she does a she does a hop teep. So she closes the gap with a spring. Gotcha. And I go, but I'm like, you have to find that. You have to read my body language and you have to get that timing. So so the guy, here's FMA version. So Guy's coming in, he's doing this, and you go, patak, you hit the hand, right? So then you do it, and then he backs up. So you go, one, two, then you come in and you step forward, if you can do that. So it's mm -hmm. to increase that, the the way the brain works, the eyes measure the distance, it sees the range, and it computes and goes, oh, I'm off range. If you can minimize that gap time in decision-making, 
Wow. If your, fighter, your fighter will be and if the minimizing the gaps. I love it. Minimizing, minimizing the mental gaps, the processing. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, yeah, so it's a lot true. of new, a lot of neurology. And the crazy thing is, grandmasters do it all the time. They just, they just don't know the terminology, the science, or whatever. And high level coaches do it. Um, fighters do it to themselves. You know. So one thing I tell my fighters, I go, "This is a Dr. Kelly thing." So I'm giving props to Dr. Too. Mm. I go, "When you think of a combo, come into the combo." And if there's empty space, fill the space. Because Dr. will do that. He'll say, remove the barrier, fill the space. So my hands up, remove the barrier, fill the space. Got it. So they come in, pop, 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 and they're, they're throwing a kick. The guy backs away, they'll throw another kick to, 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 to accommodate the, to the space. And then if they back up again, they'll do another thing. And they just pressure. There's your pressure. So... You know, there's so many different ways to train. And fighters training on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 a.m. It's just more you get work your cardio. One excuse you don't want to have is I have poor cardio. Can oh, you imagine going, you know, God, yes, thank fucking knife t- knife fight, and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, let, let me see, let me see a tired piper. Let me see a tired piper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me see your tired shiver. <laughs> There you go. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible. Oh my What's God. your point, though, man? A low gas tank? Oh, misery. <laughs> Dude, you can have the best freaking skill in the world, but if your cardio ain't there, you suck. You suck. And you know what? Don't ever let that be a factor, man. And those of you know who fight, they, fights don't last three minutes. Let's be honest. They last seconds, 30 seconds, 15, 20. And to explode that, if you don't know, those guys who think they know self-defense and combat, blah, 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 go sprint a fucking up a hill. Go sprint up a hill, come back down, do some push-ups, and you know what? Let me see you do your your shit. Because my fighters do. They do 10 sprints up the hill, and then I go, I'll call combos, then I'll clinch them, and then I'll, I'll just test their mental capacity, too, while they're tired. So if you don't have that, to, you know, this is where you do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You know? Because then you... You'll get gassed out. They'll wear you down. They'll grind you out, and you just still gonna you mat. change your position. Change your position. That's the thing. Get into a better position, right? So, this yeah. is where multidisciplined guys really have a better IQ on a lot of things. And they're like, "Well, I only do FMA. I'm oh, good for you." Yeah. I mean, you know, and and not, I'm not dogging the guys who dedicate their life and their craft to that. Dude, if that's sure. what you want, that's fine. Yeah. But I have a responsibility to Muay Thai fighters, to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters, to to FMA fighters, to boxers, and and to my also to my um, my community of whether I teach military, police, and whatnot. You know, I'm like the the simple things like like cardio. I tell my fighter go with all else being equal in skill, cardio is the main factor that's going to tell me who's going to win the fight. So don't Those let cardio be a factor. Yeah, cardio is right. You're absolutely right, man. That's just yeah. like, yeah. yeah. If you're, ugh, and, yeah. And, and, and and anytime you're involved in a sport, understand the rule sets of the sport. So mm-hmm. it changes, you know. You can't kick in boxing. You can't elbow in, in, in kickboxing. You can't, you know. Um, so in Muay Thai, there's four, four Ds. I call it the four Ds. Domination. Are you dominating a fight? Are you the ring ringmanship? Are you pushing them out? Which mm-hmm. that again is also learning how to cut off angles, how to cut them off. If if I was a piper guy and you're all about ambush, you learn how to cut off angles. Yeah, you know, this way you, yeah you're skating. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So dominance, um, disturbing their balance. Okay, yeah. and then um, duration, your cardio. And damage? Are you damaging? Are you pitter pattering your shots? Are you kicking hard? Yeah. You know? So are you are you thrusting all the way through? Are you slashing? Are are you just kind of just doing this stuff? Are you just with taking yourself to death? Yeah, and wasting with, energy. With, 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 and, yeah. Because have you ever been hit with a guy that came with a hard one too? Pack, pack, versus the guy that's like, ka-ta, 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 ka-ta. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes a difference. It's yeah, damaging. Not, not pleasant. It messes with your, messes with your head, or yeah. breaks fingers. See. Yeah. Right. Grand or, tool, so forever. This is your finger, Grand <laughs> Yeah, or you, you, oh. <laughs> from the cracked <laughs> elbows, you know. Yeah, that finger. My God, <laughs> you like that? Look at my BJJ fingers; they're all gnarled. Look at that. 
Man. <laughs> I, 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 now. I'm loving it. Loving everything you're you're speaking on. I mean, to me, especially the thing on gaps here, how quickly you, you know, that transition and mental gaps are you shifting gears, you know what I mean? Um, but uh okay. You've had okay, so far as your fire's concerned, what have you instilled in them and that you actually seen played out in their fights far as the incorporation of FMA at the end? Mm, that's a good question. Um, the triangle footwork. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I've seen that in my fighter. Um, I've seen the trapping. My fighters have done trapping. Uh, my fighters haven't done the gunting. No, no, I think one has. But I've done it a lot to them. I just pissed them off. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me see here. What else? What else? What else? What else have they done? You know, and I don't know. I don't want to call this an FMA thing. I think it's just a fight thing. Rhythm change. I tell my fighters to change their rhythm. So if they're coming in and they're kind of doing this, I tell them to change the rhythm right away. But, you know, you can call that your carenza. Yeah, you're practicing you know. that. I mean, broken rhythm should be in there. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, so I tell you, broken rhythms, feints, uh, you know, feints work huge. We just knocked out a guy. My, so my guy just won a belt, and then before that, he just knocked out a guy because he sold a feint. He just he just kind of did, did this, and then he, mm. he threw a overhand. So he, he, he dipped and hit the body. So I, I always say, sell it, sell it, right? Yeah, and yes, I say, yeah. So when I say it's sold, he dipped and went, bang, mm. knocked the guy out. So, you know, but what's, that's such a but what's, what's a double zero? Or, or depleting, you know, or you know, you sell, you go bang, yeah, and you go um, fake, and they go. Mm, same thing. selling it, selling it, selling it. Eric O'Brien, what do I say on that? Yeah, I mean, like if you can't sell the fake, man, it could work against you, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's a great point. So you, that's great, though, but you have actually seen your fighters demonstrate and pull off some, definitely some FMA stuff. I mean, that's... Yeah. yeah. And this goes back to cornering. You're not going to call moves. You're not going to be like 2-3-2 two, yeah. two switch kick. You're going to say, see what bites. See what bites. You yeah. know? Yeah. Test, test, test the low line. Test the low line. You mean you're not going to yell, open, open triangle of the goon. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They, you know what? I'm going to have one of my fighters pull pipe or move. They're just going to hammer fist a guy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just gonna have her fist guy <laughs> and they're gonna shimmer and they're gonna clap their head. And I'm gonna be like, that's dedicated to Dean Franco. <laughs> Dean Franco has a great influence on my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm about to be like, you know, you know, fighter, you gotta do that. He's like, coach, really? Well, that's just stupid. I go, why do we keep going? You got to do the moves. You got to do them. With this is, it's going to be epic. You got to do <laughs> it. On. Dim ding, 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 is ding, watching. Ding. He's in. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. I, I will do it. Watch, man. I'm going to do something like that. Oh, I'm that's going to be. That is going to be. Oh, okay. I got a question. So some this came from Phil, and he wanted to know, what is your opinion on Sikaron? And do you like it? Do you incorporate it? What do you think? Man, you know, I like everything, guys. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I always respect whatever is being taught to me. I, okay. I, may, I may do this and go, hmm. And I go, I see one, two, three, four, and five. I'm like, I would never do three. But I will understand three. If that makes sense. Yeah, because uh, I see it right for different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. There's there's moves in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I look at. I'm like, I am a fucking five six and short and stocky. Where in the hell am I gonna do that? <laughs> I'm gonna be doing that. <laughs> Tri triangle omoplata moves. Kinda. But you know what? Uh, as a student of the art, and mm -hmm. and possibly facing somebody who's gonna pull the move on me, you have to understand it. Like I just said it. it you, yeah. you have to understand both sides of the fences. So, sure. um, you know, Kisikaran, you know, and, and, and anything that adds value to 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 my growth, I'm I'm gonna embrace it. I, and even if I don't completely agree with a certain thing, I still understand it. You know, I still totally try to understand it, and I yeah. will try it. 
I would I never knock anything down. I always try it and and no. and uh, I embrace a lot of it. But Sikkiran is beautiful. I love it. You know, love a lot okay. of shit. You know. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, uh, I agree with you. I mean, like you got you better understand if it's coming at you. You know, how to defend against it. Okay, so here's your new here's your new system. It is Mu Mui Piper Kali. Like you were going to be the author of this system, okay? <laughs> so I saw somebody do white crew. So here would be an idea. I'm going to come here on the ang angle one into yeah. the elbow into there. There's your there's your blend of Kali Piper Mu Thai. There you go. <laughs> you grab the back of the head and throw knees as you're stabbing yourself. <laughs> as I'm, you know, collar ties and. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Royce, you're getting full credit for this suggestion. <laughs> so Ron Bell, we'll be coming out with this next year of this system. <laughs> Can we just throw the word jitsu in there too, just because Mike Piper Kali jitsu? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, All the above. Oh my God. All right. Okay, well, hey, let's tell the folks that maybe weren't here in the beginning. You're you're in Florida. Um, let's tell the folks why you're there and what's going on. Um, so Soki Frank Sanchez has a Soki Ship Council Award Ceremony and GM Bobby and Guru John Soriano inducted me as Man of the Year. Um, so it's a nice award to receive. Um, and I've known Frank Sanchez for a while, but um, when your Grandmaster asks you to come, so it's kind of special. So I'm kind of honoring that and, you know, showing up and I'm not going to wear tux like I wore it in LA, man. I'm just going to wear a nice shirt and pants. I'm such a rebel like that, too. I don't have a butter on, but I don't give. Oh, man, this is not me, Ty. I mean, I wear sweatpants and sweatshirts to work every day. So I'm going to go up there, get my award, and nice. just I don't do the lobby. I So I pulled up the double shields, and there were guys out there with sticks, and some guy checking in, and he had the Filipino sun and dragons on his shirt. I'm like, oh. Well, the presence of martial artists. <laughs> tell hey, tell the audience, you know, what it takes to be the criteria, if there's any, as um, far as being chosen, you know, man of the year. Like, you know, uh, what, you know, how did this come about? Like, what was, you know, what do they look for or what have you? I know GM Bobby wanted, uh, you know, definitely somebody who's been around a while, like a level six, level seven. And I forget if you wanted level sevens only for man of the year, but whatever the discussion was with, um, you know, the certain senior guys and, mm. you know, who, who, who is a current seven that you want to nominate for the Pacific Northwest and some of the other parts. So there's other, other man of the year, um, Bellator guys coming up to on okay. stage. I forget who, um, like I said, I know Alex Armazo is coming guru Alex. So he'll be, yeah. he'll be here. Um, and then, uh, I think I just saw guru June occidental outside when I pulled up, I was going to yell, hi, Hey, I think so. I, I swear I saw him. Okay. So, um, but I'm, a, you know, if you're watching this June, what's up? Um, and uh, he had like three or four people out there. And then, um, but I, I think there's different categories. There's like Grandmaster of the Year. There's Master of the Year. There's. Oh, so there's the a, so a few people getting. I got you. Okay. Yeah, there's guys, there's modernist dudes down there. There's um, getting, okay. Kali yeah. guys. There's a bunch of dudes down there. And then, then you got your traditional. Um, some of the traditional karate, kung fu, you kung know, fu. just like any, yeah. So there's this whole hotel is filled with martial artists, you know. So I'm pretty sure. Oh, so this is a big event then. I mean, this is going across the board of basically multi disciplines and multi awards. I got you. Oh, all right. Yeah. Wow. Like in Cali, when uh, Val Majelovic, so I went down to Cali in that Masters Magazine. I did a, I filmed with Masters Magazine, Val Majelovic. Mm. And when I sat, when I was there for uh, to receive my award, there was an FMA section, and GM Darren Thibon nominated me, okay. and I got Hall of the Hall of Fame award. But next to me was, uh, I forget his name. There was a couple other GMs in the table, but then they did a whole category in Kung Fu, a whole category in this, a whole category uh, there. Okay. Cynthia, Cynthia Rothrock was there, and. Uh, this person was there and I don't know. So it was, I mean, it was kind of a big event and 
and then uh, I, I I did that event, which led into me going to Hawaii Legacy, meeting the Buddha Brothers and all those other guys. And yeah. Now I'm doing a project with the Buddha Brothers. We were, dude, we had this project since COVID, but because of Canada restriction stuff, Buddha Brothers and I were been talking, but yeah. it's all good. Now we're, now we're making it happen, and then and then Val filmed me and. But you know, going back to filming, it, d seriously, D Dynamic Striking and Striker's Guide, two different organizations. There's pad holding yeah. videos there. And I talk about pad holding. Yeah. So I just, you know, and the Weapons Guide too, which is st also a Striker's Guide. Mm -hmm. um, and I talk about that too. So I think there's a lot of resources out there. There's a lot of guys on the internet that, that show some mm -hmm. good stuff. And I just like to make the correlation because being an active coach with active fighters, um, I'm in the mix every day every single day and if i'm not in the mix i'm doing something else you know so that's related so yeah i train every day and i, I don't that's, wow. <clears throat> so, sounds like yeah. a great event i mean that's and you know congrats that's awesome that you're going to be around uh you know folks like that and then of course you're seeing gm bobby um yeah um, future goals and plans. I mean, you kind of touched on it, the Budo brothers and what, you, what was kind of delayed during that. I mean, what else you got on, um, any other kind of future goals you think or anything in the works as far as fighters, yourself, systems, school? So I'm going to Italy, Team USA. Uh, the WBC president asked, asked me to, who I got come in and I can be part of the coaching staff. So I'm going there. That's in June. I'm supposed to be in Texas, and so I have Italy. July, is, I'm having a fight. I'm throwing a fight at my gym. So, okay. And I'm also having Joe Natawad, Smoking Joe, the 145 one champion Muay Thai guy. We're teaching, he's teaching uh, at my school, July 15th. We're hosting a three day seminar camp. Okay. I might be in Toronto the end of July for a fight, and then August comes around the corner, and I'm going to. Um, I'll probably be up in Canada around the um, sh what what area is that um, Calgary? I might mm. be teaching up there in Calgary. Uh, it's somewhere in August, and then it goes right into um, up fights, other fights, MMA fights, pro fights. Dr. Kelly's camp, Budo Brothers. Budo Brothers will be at the camp, so they will be filming Dr. stuff, and then one of the Budo Brothers. The other one will be over at Legacy. So since since GM did the legacy the same weekend, and I was like, ah. I was like, damn it, GM! <laughs> you know, I've been with Doctors Camp Doctors forty three years. Yeah, like, it's just like because I I've I've done the legacy like two or three years now, and so I just feel I feel like I should attend both, you know. But I dot to I always teach at Doctors, and I taught at GM there, and so maybe one of these days on the day separate a little bit, I can make both. But you know, um, so that's in September Labor Day weekend. End of September, this is a big one. Mm. Dr. Dieter, Dr. Kelly, and myself are teaching. We're doing a camp. We're doing so Dieter's summer. coming over. <clears throat> yeah. No, I'm kidding. It's out. Uh, we, we, I think it's uh, September 23rd weekend. Wow. So it's going to be two doctors and a short guy. Two doctors and a short guy. <laughs> Two two doctors and a two hon. <laughs> two, two doctors and a two hon. Hey, that's awesome though. That uh, wow, he's having Dieter. Come, wow, I mean that's. You know, Doctor did announce on your podcast. You know, my freaking phone phone was blowing up. He said yeah. he's giving the doctor title over. So call it two dot two dot two and a half, two and a half, two point five. Two and a half. Two and a half. <clears throat> but um, yeah, the, he when he told me that uh, that was quite a. It was kind of a, it was a late call in the evening and we we're just chatting and it's just mm -hmm. like, you know, I decided, you know, that you're the guy that's going to take the dot two title. And I was just, I got emotional. I was just like, yeah, I looked, over my, I looked over my wife and I go, wait, so, you know, the conversation started a long time ago and I was just like, dot two, there's other people getting dot two titles. Why don't you just start ranking us? Da, da, da. He's like, hell no. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I just give up my title. And I was like, oh, okay, what do you mean? It's like me giving my black belt. If I was a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, I'd say I would never become a black belt again. You you are the black belt. And I was like, why are you going to do that, Dr. He's like, hey, Professor Price has only awarded so many Dr. titles. So I'm not going to make up another Dr. I'm just going to give my Dr. title. I was like, 
I've never heard that before. That's I've never heard that either. Know. When he mentioned, when he, I remember that being specifically when he was talking about that, that he only gave a certain out of six, and he, mm -hmm. you know, and he was not going to add to the existing six. And yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty profound actually the way. Yeah. He so, it. so I knew about this a while ago, and he, it was kind of casual talk, and then. And you know, I mean, what, it's not a conversation to bring up. So, like, oh, when when you die, yeah. when you give up, or when you stop, when you stop teaching. So, and then I hear he says it in your podcast. I'm in Korea, and, <laughs> and people are texting me like, "Congratulations, Doctor." I was like, "What? What?" And so, yeah. dude, Doctor's on Dean's podcast right now. Just said you're getting the Doctor title. I'm like, the hell. And so I'm like, that. That's when you saw me get on. Yeah, I yeah, 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 the airport. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um. You know that's a that's that's a big deal because Dutch has been a very influential yeah. part of my life. You know he he's he was my first grandmaster and and uh, and you know we it became it was one of those things and I walked in the room and uh, and speaking of pad holding, mid holding, empty hand, dude, the travel wrench. When I the got travel the travel wrench, wrench yeah, I started doing the travel wrench stuff with Dutch. The empty hand opened up tremendously because yeah. with that impact karambit i started seeing where i can hit with a puño turn mm. it over this way oh, yeah. with that this part here and it, it just and this this actually i have one okay because so I, tra I travel with it look at that dot, dr kelly's travel wrench there it so, is. i mean there it is boom i punch yeah. you when i hit you i hit you at this point the ring, point, yeah. i can mm -hmm. come back up there with a ring into your uppercut and do and if you pinch a finger, you can do joint yeah. manipulation. But no Not officer, pleasant. it's just a tool. Yeah, it's <laughs> just a tool. <laughs> Actually, I've said this at the airport when they they pulled they got on my bag. I said it's my self myofascial release device. Hey, I need it's therapeutic, and I need it, and I have a medical reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now for you, Dean, I would put yeah. a little jingle jangle in there. See, and also, I need the auditory. Because yeah, it, it helps me calm myself. <laughs> <laughs> Your Piper Travel Ridge. So this one here has really opened up because we started using mitts. Okay, mm. You know, Datu, Datu will break up mitts in camp. Every camp, he always has mitts available because okay. we, do, we do empty hand striking. We slap, clear, elbow, punch. I mean, that's, you know, from our Lukai Lukai background. And you know, Datu is uh, a lineage holder for Lakai Lakai. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so our our warden defense system has Lakai Lakai in it, and um, yeah, the travel ranch has opened up doors, and th that's in my earlier days. And so I think my exposure, I was like, oh, dude, that's like boxing. I was like, yeah, totally, man. Mm. Bang, bang, bang. And so I started making connections. And Datu's mantra is always connecting the systems connecting the systems. so yeah, he's he just connecting yeah. systems he didn't say connecting martial arts he said connecting the systems, systems. Yeah. so if you think about it, that that because you don't say boxing is a martial arts it it's a sport and it's also a system it's a great system and i think piper is yeah. a great system it's so you know when you connect the systems you start overlapping and seeing the openings and the the the, the correlations and, and structure yeah. patterns and you start putting it in there and then you're no, like hey, some Here's some C-Lot, here's a foot trap, here's a trap, here's a JKD trapping thing, here's a here's a this, here's a that, here's a Muay Thai elbow, here's a Muay Thai knee, push off into a side kick, is that karate or is it not? Or is that Muay Thai? Is that a side team? Is that, you know, so you start doing all that stuff and boom, you know, you become the martial artist. And what you make of it, ready? Create the art within your art. That's what Dr. Talks about anyway. Oh, yeah. And he's, he's always he's always emphasized that with me, and because of that. I I I never held myself back, and whenever I approached another system, I was like, you know what, Doctor gave me this free mind thinking since the beginning, and so no way are you going to constrict that or or, or box me mm. in or tell me I can't think outside the box. Personally, because he's of, to me in my opinion, he's one of the best. Like just yeah. the 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 way he's able to fuse the fusion. I I just I don't know if I've seen anybody better, and that's me outside looking in. That's not even being yeah. in front of him. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. He's, yeah. Well, I guess that means you're coming to water and steel. So you I have to come. Just, you know, the well, for one to meet you guys. I mean, yeah, that's um, yeah. I have like a bucket list. <laughs> I mean, that's going on currently since doing this show, and it keeps getting bigger and longer and longer. You know, and uh, 
Oh, question just came in, or it might have been here. Okay, this is from Glenn. Maybe you could write a book from the view of a coach. Mm, that's good. Mm. You know what? You know, just just recently somebody said something. I don't want to get into it too deep because, you know, <laughs> they said something and and I and it was supposed to be someone insulting, and I responded back. I go. You're right. Um, you you saw my true colors, and that true colors is a coach. I'm a good coach, and uh, so I don't want to get into context too much, but you know, there's so much that goes into coaching that you give so much of yourself. You know, if I'm up at two a.m. and I'm in the freeway picking up a student that just got into a car wreck, um, I'm in the hospital bed next to a student. See, there's so much in coaching that. It's not just the the program design, the the you know the the it's the relationship. You know, ah. you build so much of a relationship with your fighter that when you're in there, you're in there with them. One of my fighters, I know what my fighters are going to do before they do it because of their mm-hmm. body language. Mm-hmm. I just know them too well. I also know them too well that before they go to war, I would look at them and say, "Dude, what's on your mind right now?" What the hell's going on? Is it your girl again? Is it your mom? Is it your dad? Is it your boyfriend? What's going on? Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. Fight. And they're like, yeah, coach. I'm like, dude, you're about to go there and beat some ass for three rounds. You need to get your shit together. Let's mm-hmm. go. One guy was crying when I was wrapping his hands. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? This guy's going to title fight. So I called him over. And I didn't want to do it in front of everybody. I go, dude, what's wrong? He goes, I'm just getting real scared. And I go, well, back. I slapped him. I grabbed his head, headbutted him, and I go, get your shit together. I go, Mm -hmm. I left my wife and daughter crying at a hospital, the animal hospital, because my freaking little chihuahua, my daughter's dog, ate a bunch of chocolate, or yeah, I think it was chocolate or something. Yeah, chocolate. She's about to die. I just paid four fucking thousand dollars for the vet bill. Uh Hopefully she lives. Hopefully she lives. And you're here crying and being a little bitch about ten minutes, five rounds of two minute two minute rounds. Yeah. He just went, You're right, coach. And I was like, Get your yeah. ass in there and go to war. I was like, You fucking well, I'm, I'm, here. I'm here with you right now. And he and he's just like and there's so I mean, that book is gonna get into some deep subjects because people don't see that part of coaching. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it means it burns it burns coaches out i can tell you the amount of coaches that have gone through relationship issues with their own family because they dedicate so much to their fighters their students financial i can you, <laughs> i'm gonna be careful what i say here this podcast my wife goes you loaned how much money, <laughs> how much money? Uh, oh man the, the amount of crying the amount of like coach are you at the gym can i stop by and then they talk to me for two hours I told my wife I'm gonna be home at eight p.m. I'm home at ten thirty. Yeah, I mean, coaching I, I, is. I can't imagine. Then, I can't, you know, from doing these shows. Coaching, I mean, you're, oh, you're that's yeah. a whole different league. What you're talking about. It is, and coaching is also learning when to poke and prod, mm. when to back down, um, and coaching kids. You know, parents are like, "Thank you so much. My kids have gotten yeah. a lot better." Yeah, I'll tell you a story. I was coaching a girl, and she was being bullied. A guy would come up and grab her by the neck and shove her against the wall and and just just say vile things. And she's still alive. Be, yeah, right. Nine year old. So, and and he would come up behind her and grab her, put a finger gun in her head, and just say, "Boom, boom, I got you" or something. So I I pulled the parents in the room. And I said, "Look, you know, I don't. This is in my academy. I don't teach students to be victims." I go, "Bullshit." I go, "You tell that." I looked at her. I go. He comes up to you, you give him one warning and one warning and you keep the shit out of him and you elbow his face. And she was like, what? And I told the parents, I go, I don't care what you agree or disagree or I don't care what the school system says. That's bullshit. And so, <laughs> and she's a very timid girl. And I go, you're not a victim. Can you get off that victim mindset? But that could have been a fighter too. I'm like, stop being bullied, control the ring, press forward. Mm-hmm. So it all, it all applies. And so that girl came back the next day, she was smiling and she's like, I mean, not, it took maybe a couple of days, and she goes, Coach, I did it. I go, what'd you do? I was like, wait, what happened? I was like, he came up again, and I said, leave me alone. 
or you're going to pay the price. She's like, but you're going to pay the price. And she lifted that knee up and she went, bam, push kick right into the gut. And he, blew, he doubled over it. And she, he just, to this day, he doesn't bother her. And I was like, that's coach. Screw Fantastic. all the belts, for, for all the belts and stuff. Dude, that's kind of cool. I just can't I believe that guy's still alive. Uh, point, I mean, doing yeah, this to yeah. that's. Yeah, man. So coaching, yeah, writing a book, man, that's. Oof. Yeah, well, hey, you know, it's something you can do, you know, when you get some time, um, you know, when you're, you know, when you're laying low, retired, and all that. Um, See, Royce Ramos, yeah, but I put in two shoulders. I've actually put two shoulders back in in the middle of a fight and one at a camp in Idaho up in the mountains. Yeah. You know, being a coach is uh Yeah, actually uh you guys wear many hats, right? Um okay. So over I got around I got Jetson. All right. Okay, if you had the time and the desire, what other FMA system would you do? I, I no hands there. I'm just uh I just I just was uh, I'm just was moving this over there. That's all. So I mean, don't I don't want that to influence your decision. I'm just simply moving the book from here to over here. Okay. Do you want, do you want to see my lutang, my floating footwork? Do you want to see my um, yeah, but I don't want. But again, no influence. I'm not trying to you know, persuade your decision or anything like that. So. <laughs> Time and money, baby. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Some cash on the side. I'm just kidding. Right, no, I listen up. Listen up. Okay. The book back to my original place. Okay. K. How you do it? K. I. So, um, you know, I actually trained a K. I. with uh, Tom DeTang and Guru Louis Lindo, Canada. Two so great, had, two great ones there. I drive up every, oh God, it used to be every month. And that's where I got Martin Chamani with Ed Wong. But I, I used to drive up there just to, to get some hands in and touch hands. And Pichi Barong came through. Um, we got, you know, it, it, it was fun. KI was, I love it. I, so I, I learned a lot. I just didn't have the chance to go back up anymore. And Tom is such a humble guy. Yeah, I've heard nothing about. You know, he, he, you know, he, he's like, "Don't call me. Just, I'm just Tom." I'm like, yeah. "You are Tom Detang." You, 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 Tony Diego, the true heir. <laughs> Tony Diego. If those you don't know and you want to know, Tatang, help me out here, Dean. Tony Diego, Tom Detang. Tom Dye. Absolutely. Yeah. And learning from him was fucking just amazing. Um, so he taught me a lot. And I would bring students up. I'd drive up to Canada. I mean, you know, old school way, man. You wanted knowledge, you could got it. You didn't just download some shit on the internet and you drove. Right. Like I said, man, back in the day, I told these kids, and that's why my coaching, I'm very, very, very protective of, of, of getting your reps in and actually working with people. I'm like, Dude, you guys live in an age where seven to ten seconds TikTok videos, you have such a short attention span that mm -hmm. you see this thing, you don't realize that person's repped it out thousands of times. Like, what to invest in actually understanding the material? So yeah, we drive all the way up to Canada from Seattle, and um, you know we we just train for the day because Tom I think came out of the woodwork and started doing like a once a month thing or once a quarter thing. Mm. Uh, he wasn't he wasn't really he was kind of like just. It just you know being uh really under the radar and he was Bill really is really, for the most man. part sadly you know he's not on social media but you know obviously incredible legendary status um there's yeah. no real you know yeah i think huh, let me let me pull up a picture and see the last time sure. I, I went up tom to tank, or maybe you can just search him since you're from the laptop See here. Look at that. Oh, there's Peachy, Tom Detang, and Louis Lindo. Lindo. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, Louis was on here some years back. I mean, Louis is another another gem. You know? Oh, he is, dude. Louis. Yeah. yeah. Such, this was in. This is. Nice. Oh, this is 2018. Wasn't. Is Guru Ed? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's and then so guess where we trained out of a freaking warehouse. I know that's that's where we trained out of a warehouse. So, yeah. yep, I'm not sure what's going now to... since COVID. I hear it's, I don't know if they ever got back to form yet, or I'm not sure, but okay, yeah. you, you, here's your KI 2015. Come on, man, in Canada with, with the KI guys. I know, see. So we keep moving that book across, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, oh, here at a KI seminar. I'm using Travel Ranch and I'm giving a presentation to all the KI guys. Oh, look, empty hand. Wait, I'm not doing it. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, so it's it's this is 2015. Peachy was there. Yeah, I remember it was, she, she came out. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. good stuff. So yeah, no, I, I I do like um um I do like KI a lot, and I I want to invest in. Oh look, this is when I got this is my batch mates when I got my two hunt title. So look at so, that. Yeah, but um yeah, so I, I do like. Yeah, I'd like to invest in more. I think um, it it's it's so direct. It's so beautiful. The footwork, the timing. Um, yeah, yeah, no argument. Man. Yeah, but you know it's hard. Yeah, you, know, you, you know, is I mean, there's stuff I would like to do, but you know, it's you know, time. Hey, you know, all I remember is frale, frale. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> frale. <you> say frale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Media. oh there you go there you go look at you look at you Pluma. Pluma. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. See. oh my god you know, you know you know it's funny dean after a while because I, like i said i trained in a lot of systems that's why i don't put ki down it's i'm not I'm not trying to disrespect the ki like that i don't want to ever have ki guys go you try I go actually I did but I don't need to put that out there it just but yeah it's one of the one of the other arts I explored you know and I, I loved it it's just you know do I have the time and commitment because when I say I'm going to do something I, do I know I'm just you know, same here. I don't I don't I'm not that guy man that's the worst so good yeah, I go to a fucking seminar take a picture with a dude and be like I'm a KI guy do you know how many guys do that in the FMA world take are you on with, with El Strisimo when he was still alive <laughs> Sickening, man. It is Take a look, man. It is you know? If it I wear the two on title sickening. proudly, I wear proudly. The G, being GM Bobby Guru, yes. Being a dot two guy, yes. Because those are men I've invested lots of time with, you know, and 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 proudly can say that I, I've trained and trained and trained hundreds and thousands of hours, rather than saying, you know, I went to a three hour seminar. Look at me, you know. Yeah. So no, I know. Yeah. But so your movements. Sometimes I forget the terminology at that point, Dean, and then I'm re I'm already doing it, and so, and Doctor freed my mind like that, saying movement is movement at the end of the day. Yeah, you know? embrace what you like, and yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. wow. Well, this has been yeah. wonderful. I appreciate you coming on. What time you got to? Uh, what time you do at the event? So uh, I'm supposed to be a stripper at the strip club. Uh, so you have to be a stripper me. first, and then you're going to the event. <laughs> <laughs> the event's tomorrow night. I'm just a day early, so I'm gonna. Oh, go you got a day early? Oh, I don't know what maybe oh. thought. Oh, okay. okay. I'm gonna go to find a barber, and I'm gonna get a little nice shave. Yeah, I um, mean, you gotta you gotta dress that. I mean, that's you know. I'm trying to look a little dapper. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go shirtless. I think I'm gonna change. I'm, I think I'm gonna be a rebel. I think I'm just gonna go up there you with just a go tank there. top. All right, I'm here for my reward. I'm gonna show all my tats and do the haka. You know, maybe just. You know, like, yeah, I'm here. <sighs> Yeah. You know, just do that. You know, I think, any, yeah. I think you can get away with it. You know, I, I think so. Actually, I think so. I think Jim Bobby would laugh. He loves it when I do yeah. stupid shit like that. Yeah, I he, think he, he cracks me up. He he finds <laughs> you know what Jim likes. He likes my antics. I think he loves these Jims too. They just think uh, I don't know. You know. Yeah, I think you know. I think, think, you know, I think like anything that breaks the norm, and yeah, I mean, what? Yeah, they're human. You, you know, people ask me a typical question is belts and two on belts and whatever group. 
how do you balance out three major FMA systems? Yeah. Major as in the well-known, and that run into politics. Hey, man, politics is there no matter what, but here's the thing. I know uh, nothing I about said, politics. I, right, I, I, sometimes, I know nothing about politics. <laughs> sometimes, I get a, sometimes I get a phone call like, hey, man, I saw a balloon tall guy using gununting. I'm like, and? And what? It's a fucking gununting. So what? You know, I didn't know the bullet cell guys were, 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 were confined to one stick, you know. Well, why is Dr. Kelly talking about, uh, you know, not that somebody said that, but uh, X, Y, Z. Who cares? So, you know, in the, end, in, the, in the earlier days, I just told people, I'm like, look, man, here's the deal. You know, I, I started with Dr. Two. I am now exploring this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, every grandmaster knows of the other grandmaster. They know who I am to them. They know I'm one of their senior guys. And if they can't respect that, then you know, I wouldn't be with them. And they did. GM Bobby invited Dotu to my testing and Dotu sat yeah. in the panel. Grand Two ones, uh, you know, asked how GM's doing. GM uh, Bobby asked how Grand Two ones doing. And and I've had, you know, I've heard other tones like, you know, why is Belton doing Belen's walk and this, that, and the other. And you know what, you know what GT says? Belt, he calls he calls me Belt. Ah, Belt is just exploring the other systems to learn how to counter it. Mm. So thank you, GT, for just saying that. But you know, and the reality is, I'm just exploring my passion. The counters are already in my head. Because you mm. introduce one movement, I'm finding ways to counter that. When I did my yeah. 24 techniques, I actually had 75 because every time I came at my came through a technique, I I came up with a counter. I came up with variations one, variations two, but that's how I taught class. That's how I teach class all the time. Go to my yeah. Wu-Tai class. Here's a combo. Here's a variation of it. Here's a variation if you're moving backwards. Here's a variation if they throw a counter to this. And here's a fourth variation. Now play with it. Have fun. Mm. Choose which one you want. So that's how you teach. You know. Yeah. Give them instead of them. saying. Yeah. Give them let them choose for their journey, right? Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, they wrapped out already for the last 10 15 minutes the original combo so what springs up from that is their creation their their footwork patterns their 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 interpretation of it you know mm. and you're you're not you you're not them and they're not you and so i i told people i go if i could train a six foot three guy and i'm five six i'm training because i want to i want him to exp- express himself being six three mm. but the too many instructors try to shove their thoughts and their and their theories and stuff down other people's throats as students because huh? well back when i was a fighter yeah and i was five six you know nobody gives two shits about when you're five six as a fighter teach me i'm six six one i how do i use my my my, my teeth and my jab teach me you're coaching if you take on that role as a coach accept that responsibility greatly don't 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 slam your ideologies down their throat because it worked for you do you, that means you're not a coach because a coach really understands their athlete, their fighter, and tries to find the best way to, to exploit their attributes and what makes them great. And then really work on their weaknesses and exploit their strengths. Yeah. But you know, so to answer that question, you should write a book. That's a chapter in itself. How to actually be a coach instead of just being a fucking big mouth and yeah, just to right. so put, put yourself in your pedestal. Or yeah. living vicariously through your fighters or whatever. Now, and... if no. Here's the thing: If you secure yourself as the guy who's known for knees, like Ajahn Dieselnoy, and I met him and trained with him when I was in Thailand two months ago, the first time I was in Thailand, uh, I want I go give me everything about your knees. Get literally, I want you're the fucking man. You are Lumpini legend, Golden Era Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. You're the knee master. I want to know that. If you're the body song master, I want to know that. Mm-hmm. Shove your ideologies down my throat because I want to know every aspect that made you successful with that body song. If you're the single stick guy, and that's when you get factions. I, and come I give in. Come, yeah. I'm the shimmering master. I'm going to give it to you. Okay. I'm going. To, I'm just going to give it to you. I'm going to surrender and just give it to you. Okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I get where you're going with this. I know you did. You felt uncomfortable to ask. I'll give it to you. Okay. <laughs> Do I grab my ankles now or later? <laughs> I'm going to send you a couple of bids to work over the weekends. We're going to meet when you get back and we're going to polish it. Okay? <laughs> give it to me. Give it to me, Dick. Come on, you got to do it. You got to do it. You can't right. talk about it. 
So we're gonna do hummingbird, okay? So you go here and then. Oh my god! I great. couldn't. I, I couldn't resist. <laughs> the hummingbird master. Yeah. So you're a hummer, huh? You like to hum. My, my hummingbird master <laughs> says that this is the how you have to do. <laughs> oh man, but hey, this I'm getting, be... I got jam. Yeah, getting uh, not so pleasant message as you can see. <laughs> Why, Mr. Franco? Did you feed the dogs? That's my wife. <laughs> Hey, tell her she screwed with my with my Piper lessons. That's messed up. <laughs> uh oh, I'm like, I'm gonna be getting. <laughs> uh, shit. You got double but tap. Now... Oh shoot, dude! Your wife actually went in the forum. You're in trouble uh -oh. now, dude. But now you. All right. All right, thank you. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell the missus I said. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't think I've I think I laughed as hard in the podcast. In I'm gonna tell you what. You know what? I'm gonna assert myself. I'm a grown man. I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, yo, woman. Let me tell you something. How did you say something? <laughs> Uh, Tracy, he's talking shit. You're gonna kick his ass. Oh no! I'm, and she doesn't need much ammunition. <laughs> but hey, man, I want to okay. wish you the best weekend down there. I'm, this has been an absolute pleasure and fun. <laughs> Tracy, Tracy said. <laughs> I'm Tracy, go tell him to go make a sandwich in the kitchen, bear. Tell him, Tracy, tell Dean to make a sandwich with his Piper knife, the mayo. Just yeah. slap it on. I'm going to be walking around full cover. <laughs> Kick his ass, Tracy. Oh, shit. She said, I will. Uh, Tracy, uh, dude, I, I, I like your wife. She's awesome. Yeah. She beat your ass. He can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> But wait, Tracy, but he could feed the dog, right? <laughs> he can't make a, he can't, I'm gonna be walking around with a helmet on for the rest of the day. You can't make a fucking sandwich. You suck, dude. She she thinks I'm pretty helpless, yeah. <sighs> oh my god, dude, your wife getting on this podcast is the best thing ever. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> she's a troll. She's a troll like my wife. I love it. <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> yeah, she, I'm telling you. No, she has. She's got a couple sticks down there. One of them, I think, is the African War Club with a little nipple on the end. That's real pleasant getting hit by that. <laughs> you just told the world that you love getting hit with a nipple. <laughs> No, I'm saying that's what she likes to do. No, 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 no. You just said <laughs> African war club with a nipple in the end. She likes to hit me with it. You just admitted you like getting hit with a nipple. All right. Well, I was really trying to keep that low. Um, oh, the low. I'm got, I'm... <laughs> oh, my God. This is, is out of control. D, what did you do? Oh, Eric. Don't even, I'm telling you right now, Eric, if you want to see your next level it'll be 2030, don't even go there. Eric's like, at least I can make a sandwich and mow the lawn. <laughs> I, need, I need assistance, okay? <laughs> oh, you better stop. Tr oh Tracy, God. Tracy, here you go, Tracy. <laughs> Tracy. <laughs> Oh my god. All right. All right, Dean. You're gonna get in trouble. Oh, oh right. my gosh. All right. Well, hey, seriously. Oh, last man, have a great weekend. Um, and I hope it all goes well. All right, yes. brother. You take care. <laughs> all right, take care. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> Don't tell anybody about the African war club, man. <laughs>
You, you told everybody about the nipple. I like getting hit with the right, nipple. Well, I'm going to have to edit that. No, I'm just okay. no you're not. No, you're, you better not edit it, nipple lover. No, it's out there. I'm going to have to just hey, man up. Dean, you know it. what? There's a move that you're going to have to make called the purple nurple. The, the, the purple what? The purple nurple. The purple nurple. <laughs> I'll have people in the comments there and tell you what that is. <laughs> I, I'm, right. sure, I, I'm sure. Oh, man. All right. Okay. I, all right. Be okay. good. Right. <laughs> no, I won't be good. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm forever compromised. <laughs> As part of this awesome podcast, is not being good. No, be bad. <laughs> you, when you go on there, you'll not, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. <laughs> You're like, I don't think I ever want that invite Belton back again. <laughs> oh, okay. All oh, right, guys. Man. See you later. All Bye. right. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, <can't do> this. <laughs> All right, folks, that wraps up 410. Um, I wasn't expecting to conclude that way. Um, not much I could say. <laughs> Who's next? Episode 411, Sunday night. We're going to be going over people who train different nice systems and why. What is the appeal? I believe nights in our DNA. So we're going to cover all that stuff. So that's 8 o'clock Sunday night. Uh, you'll see the flyer tomorrow. So if you can, jump in on that. should be pretty interesting. Thanks to all who watched, commented, asked questions, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> oh, brother. What an ending up. Huh? <laughs>